Okay, everyone, let's cover what a IMEI is for your different cellular devices, why the carriers care about it, um, what it really uh, helps them do, and then also how you might change it. Now, specifically, I'm going to cover on this Elsys Amplimax Ultra 5G unit, which is a standalone device that you buy independently of your plan, and then you put a SIM card in it to work. It does uh, technically support eSIM, but I haven't figured that one out, so I'm going to talk mainly about a physical SIM card that you put in here. And then we're going to talk about um, the setting. In fact, I'll show you step by step on my computer what I do to actually adjust the IMEI on this unit. So before I get too far, I got to say hit that like button because this is Nate and this is the Nate or Tater channel. And I really encourage you to consider subscribing to my channel so I know that you like this and you want to see more of it. All right, so I have many different services here for my home internet and their cellular base. This one here is a T-Mobile gateway on it. And on the back side of it, it has a barcode and it has IMEI listed as well as MAC address and these other things. The IMEI is a basically an ID number uh, for the unit itself, so separate from the SIM card. And then oftentimes a carrier will see that. You can think of it maybe like a VIN number on a vehicle or a license plate on a vehicle. Um, that is um, assigned um, to a specific piece of hardware, not to the SIM card and not to your specific plan. Uh, it stays with the hardware itself. Now, carriers have different ways to address IMEI and if they want to limit the types of devices because the IMEI will tell them uh, also what type of device. Is it a hotspot? Is it a gateway? Is it a cell phone? Is it an IP camera, some other IoT type device? and they can limit what types of devices they want on specific plans which makes a lot of sense if they sell a tablet plan or a cell phone plan they don't want um, them going away into different devices than they're intended for so let's talk about the legality of changing the imei now i'll state this with a big asterisk that i am not a lawyer i do not provide any type of legal advice but from what i know there is nothing that is illegal about changing the IMEI on a device. Um, just like it's not illegal to change a VIN number on a vehicle, if you have permission, if you own that VIN, you know, if the vehicle, whatever, um, was uh, crashed or reassembled and you took a vehicle and you assembled it into a fire truck, you can actually change the VIN number, get a new VIN and put it on. There's nothing illegal about that. However, if you change your VIN number on a vehicle for nefarious means, meaning you're trying to hide the identity if that vehicle was stolen and you want to try to conceal that and you put another clean vent on it, that is illegal, right? So kind of the same theory applies with IMEI, that if you own a device and um, you have, let's say you're messing with these settings and you messed up the IMEI because you're learning how to do these AT commands I'll show you next, you can change that and that is not illegal for you to change and to correct it. But if you are trying to specifically um, hide your identity as a person or get a plan that you're not paying for by having a different IMEI, then that is potentially illegal or at least it's against the terms of service of the carrier. So that's really the, to me, the bread and butter of what IMEI and all this, um, you know, online chatter about it. And in fact, the, the laws are a bit murky. They're not very clear. In fact, I think the Patriot Act is the only thing that really directly calls out it and it's very vague and that it's for um, it, it's illegal to do it for nefarious means so to hide or conceal your identity um, that's really the part that is illegal but if you are not trying to hide who you are um, but you're just adjusting the IMEI on a device that might be against a company policy like a carrier policy which means you might lose that plan or whatnot um, but from what I've seen it's not specifically against any type of state or federal law in the US so Let's uh, talk about how I actually adjust it. Now, the, if there are a little bit of complications to actually change it. You can't go in on this device specifically in a um, Ethernet cable to a computer and connect and change it in the web user interface. For this specific device, at least now, unless they update the firmware in the future, you actually have to plug in via USB cable. So I have a USB cable here that goes to my computer, and I'll show you how you log in. It's really not hard, but you do have to follow each step precisely if you mess up a step uh, it will not work correctly so now to do that uh, we pull this flat back you can see here is a sim card there's actually two slots in there i have a now right now i actually have a t-mobile business 
uh, internet SIM card. So that's very similar to their T-Mobile 5G home internet uh, SIM, but it's set up from the get-go as a bring-your-own-device. So there's no restrictions. Um, I can have any IMEI I want, and it will connect to that. On the home internet SIM card, this one does have a physical SIM just like this. On the bottom of it, you just open up a little door, and there it is. And that card fits right in here, but for that one, the home internet plans, they monitor the IMEI, and they want the IMEI to match the barcode that's on the back here in whatever device that is in. So on this one here, we can see on the right side is a USB-C port. That's what I will plug into, and I also have to give it power. This unit is powered via Ethernet cable, so there's no separate power cord. But what that means is they include this little... Um, PoE injector switch and so I have the 12 volt um, sorry 24 volt uh, power uh, plugged into it and then on one side it's labeled LAN so that's will go to my um, computer if I or my router if I want to hook up to it and then this other side says Amplimax so that goes to this now for this specific one I actually don't need to have an Ethernet going to my computer I just need Ethernet from here to here because it's going to get power but it's not going to talk or do any data across that all the data in this case is going to go over the USB port uh, right here. So let me hook that up, hop on my computer, and then I'll show you the steps. It's really quite quick. All right, some of the reason why I like collaboration with some of these companies like Waveform, Chester Tech Repairs, and the Wireless Haven is because the amount of customer service that they provide the users. And what I will say is with a lot of these things, they're difficult. That's probably why you're watching this video is because not everything you can figure out on your own and the products that you can buy that they don't have a live person with a phone number and an email that you can get a hold of uh, during regular business hours or even sometimes after hours um, it makes it harder to use this stuff so i really do like richard here who is the owner of the wireless haven where he is trying to help out us users get the best signal and speed out there so this is his site and this is actually a page that he created specifically for the else's amplimax he actually made his own videos on uh, getting started, installation, um, power up, and commands that I'm going to cover here, as well as the web user interface. Uh, and I'm just kind of um, summarizing some of these, making a little bit of a quicker video. Um, here are special notes for firmware. This is actually uh, firmware that he helped uh, get uh, updated and fixed. So mine does have that latest one um, note there. But really, this is part I'm going to cover in this video is the AT command. So. You do need to have a way to communicate from your computer to the ELSIS, and the best way to do that is with the program called PuTTY for Windows. You can do this with Linux and Mac OS with a terminal application, but I'm not going to get in those details on this one. I'm just going to show you on Windows. And then you do need drivers for the modem itself. So these are the drivers to download and install. Now, when you download the drivers and you try to install them, it might give you a warning like it gave me, where it said, hey, do you trust this? You have to click like uh, advanced or see more options and then click yes for them to actually install um, on Windows. But you do that, they're safe to use. Um, it just gives that, that warning on Windows. So I'm gonna use PuTTY as well. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is actually open up our device manager. So after you've installed the drivers, you, there's a um, setup.exe. It'll tell you to restart your computer uh, to make sure all those settings, those drivers get in use. And then after you've restarted your computer, just go to the Windows icon, go to Device Manager here. And then we are going to go down to Ports. And we can see there that my USB modem um, AT port, and AT is the command um, port, is COM11. If you don't see these AT port, DM port, DMEA port, it means your modem drivers probably did not get installed correctly. You can also verify that under the modems there, you'll see this, um, this modem listed out there. So once I know my COM for my AT port, I can open up PuTTY that I installed. All right, so here is the PuTTY. Now I went ahead and saved a uh, session so I can click load back there but if you didn't you can manually select serial type in your com port and change the speed so I'm just going to click load for mine and you'll see that serial got selected com 11 got put in there and then the speed of 115200 that's the connection speed 
it actually could be left between the default was 9600 that would still work but um the 11 uh 52 uh, 0, 0 is the correct one so now i'll click open and you can see here that it uh, ran the um the terminal and you can see it says ready and it tells me that there is not a sim card in either the first or the second one if i want to just double check that i'm still connected i can type ati in and hit enter and then you'll see that it returns back that i have this 520n-na modem which is the modem i would expect so that means i'm successfully talking to this unit here all right so to enter a at command um, remember that there are no backspaces so if you mistype something and you you can hit backspace but it won't actually work um, the text goes away from your screen but that command won't work so don't backspace if you mess up just hit enter and then start again so I'm going to type in AT plus E G M R and then I'm going to do equals and then if I want to write the IMEI, I'm going to hit 1. If I want to read it, I'll hit 0. So I'm going to hit 0 just to read it out. And then comma 7. And then hit enter. And so here I can see that EGMR is my IMEI of this device. Now it will also be listed on the unit itself in text. If I wanted to edit that, I could type in AT plus E. G M R equals one comma seven comma and then I needed to do double quotes and then I need my 15 digit number so that's like you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen whatever that is I think I counted right and then in the double quotes and then hit enter and that will write that um, number as the IMEI to the unit. So that's how you do this. And then you could um, type in the AT plus EGMR equals zero comma seven, and it will read it back and you can verify that you have the correct numbers. You do want to make sure that this number is absolutely correct and none of those 15 digits is wrong. I would not recommend copying and pasting, even though it's tempting because it can sometimes mess up, especially if it's a rich text field. Uh, versus a simple text. So just type it in manually. If you make a mistake um, and you mistype something or you put in 14 digits and enter, I think it will error out and you can just retype it again. You can also rewrite it as many times as you would like. And this does not risk hurting the gateway itself, the ELSIS unit. You can't brick it or mess it up. If you do fat finger a number, worst case, you have to log back in through PuTTY and type in the correct one for it to be. So uh, pretty low risk uh, to make an update here if you need it. All right, so be sure to follow along with the playlist. I do have many other videos of this ELSIS unit um, with details about uh, the connection, the differences, uh, as well as the detailed specs of the unit if you want to find out more about it. So follow along. I do put a link in the video description down below where not only you can get a referral uh, link to buy the unit, but also for uh, the playlist and other information on my channel as well. So I want to thank you for following along. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I do try to read those and get to them uh, to answer those or maybe make new videos for you in the future based off your own questions that you have. So thank you and take care.